Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Cadaver's weekly webinar. Uh, this is Patrick, and I'm uh, happy to have Don and Kirby. This webinar would not be possible without their efforts uh, to prepare the demos and the slides that you see. And I uh, want to thank Kirby and Don for the hard work they put into uh, create this webinar content today. You'll hear from them in a moment. Actually, Kirby, how's the audio? <laughs> Is there anything that's sounding good? Hello, Patrick. Yeah. Yeah. How's the audio good? Yep. Good. Yeah. Don, are you there? Yep. Wonderful. Hello, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. And today's webinar, uh, we are uh, brushing off a topic that we have covered in the past, and we're adding new uh, features to it, new concepts, new techniques. And really what we're talking about today is time. Um, when you have a process that collects data, and that could be a, a form-based process, it could be a SharePoint process with lists, it could be um, your own app, but you're always going to be storing the date and the time so that you can do metrics on how fast your process is running. So it's really important at the very beginning, you might be thinking, I need to gather this data, so I need to collect the data, I need to get a form together. Um, and then you start collecting data, and then the next thing people want is, well, how, how are we doing? <laughs> you know, you want reports, and you want to know which which uh, things are overdue, you know, what what is behind. And, and that's really um, what we're focusing on today is that aspect of measuring your processes health with some kind of uh, calculation based on whether the the data is overdue or not, whether the, the approval process for the item in the queue is overdue. And so we're gonna show a couple things up front. We're gonna talk about, we're gonna do a demo on, first of all, calculating difference between dates, because we definitely need to do that before we can determine overdue status. And we'll show you how to do it without weekends or holidays. So a lot of times you want just the weekdays, just the work days, and you don't want to factor in weekends or holidays. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll do a demo uh, combining those two techniques to show how to calculate overdue status and use simple formatting rules to highlight rows in a dashboard to, to tell you what tasks are overdue. And then I'm gonna switch to Don, and Don's going to uh, add to show you this new content that he prepared uh, to convert uh, time from different time zones. In fact, we have a, a customer scenario that we dealt with just in the last week or so that he's going to talk about um, where they were using SharePoint online and trying to store the time and they had to convert the time from different time zones, which is very interesting. If you have people in different time zones, you obviously need this feature, but it's not just that. Sometimes the form will have the server time in it, and you may need to calculate the difference between that server time and the local time when you submitted the form. And then he'll also show how you can extract data from those fields to make a nicely formatted message for your users. You don't want to give them, if you're familiar with the date and time fields in InfoPath, um, in Forms, in SharePoint, Forms Viewer, they, they tend to have uh, an XML format. So it's like 2019-06-06, and then the T symbol, and then you get the time, 08 colon, you know, whatever, 07 colon, whatever the seconds are. Um, so that's not a very human-friendly format. So Don's gonna show you in this last demo how to make it more human-friendly. Okay, so any questions before we get started? We are recording. We will be packaging up the video. Um, samples. So you're, gonna, you're gonna get a sample today. We have one sample for demo one and two, and then we have another sample for demo three, and then Don's got two samples. You'll get all of those samples as part of the webinar package. Um, but any questions before we get going on the demos? So the first demo I'd like to show you is this date disk command. This We need to calculate the difference between two dates. So, we have our SharePoint site here, and what I've done for this webinar is we've actually uploaded some forms to Forms Viewer. Now, Forms Viewer has all of those QRules commands that we're going to use to calculate the date diff, so you will need to have the Forms Viewer app installed. The good news is that the Forms Viewer app is now available in the SharePoint App Store. You can just download it and install it. Um, we, you do need to be a central admin to install it or to, or to enable it. You can 
ask your central admins for approval, and then they can do it. So it's pretty simple. It's simpler than it was before. They don't have to actually go into central admin. They just have to approve the request. Um, in another month or so, we are going to make it available that doesn't require central admin. So just FYI for those of you who are um, trying to get turned on in your 365 tenant, but you haven't done it yet because you need that central admin authorization, uh, we'll make it easier for you in a month um, or so. It might be less than a month, but okay. So here's my form. So um, I forget what they're calling the 4th of July day this year. I, I know it's like, was it Salute America or something like that? We're being very patriotic this year, and so uh, we have new, new special uh, um, festivities that are going to be happening in Washington D.C. And uh, I will say no more. But that's going to be on the fourth. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, remove this, this second one. And you'll notice that I want to calculate the date difference between 7-1, July 1st, and July 10th. So if I remove this second one here, I got one holiday, right? So if I calculate the work days between those two, well, let's look at the calendar. So July 1st is a Monday, right? And then we've got one, two, three, four, five. So five days that week minus the holiday. Well, let's forget the holiday for a minute. We got five days that week, and then we've got one, two. So we're, day, we're off by one day. So there's there's an issue with the calculation here where it's, it's not including one. It's like from one to 10, so it's inclusive, not exclusive. So it's going two, three, four, five, six, or not six, because that's Saturday, but eight and nine. So that's where we get the six. And then if we exclude the, if we include the weekends and just calculate the day difference, then it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that, that second one is, there's a little bit of a strangeness here because um, we're actually reducing the uh, holiday, I guess. That's why it's six. So I, I've calculated that wrong. I'm confusing you. So once again, July 1st, one, two, three, skip the fourth, four, five, and six for the work days. And then if we include the holiday, July 4th, and the weekend, we get nine. And I believe that's, those are the calculations. So the command that we're running, and if we add another, let's say we add another holiday in here, like let's say we say seven, five, is Friday, so we're going to take that off. And if I calculate again, you'll see that it changes. It's still going to calculate the total amount of days between those two dates as nine. Uh, that doesn't include the holidays, but the uh, but the, the calculation to remove uh, to uh, remove the holidays and to remove the weekends results in five. So you can see this command running in my debug mode down below. Um, let's take a look at the command more closely. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually open up this form and show this form to you. So this demo actually is for both demo one. This form is for both demo one and for demo two. And it's a pretty simple form. I want to keep things simple for these, these webinars, and uh, Don created it. Thank you, Don, for doing that. So we have the start date, the end date, and then these two buttons. And if we look at the rules on these buttons, you can see that um, we've got a command, and that command is just doing a date diff between the end date and the start date, and then there are some parameters. So let's go back to the slides and take a look. So you can see that we've put these these parameters, these what we call um, switches or, or parameters, I guess options would be another way of saying it, into the slide here. So if you if you see from our our sample, the uh, we don't have a component that's optional, but we are saying that the path to the holidays is this expression here. So where are those holidays? So your holidays can actually be in a secondary data source or they can be in a main data source. In this case, we've added the holidays to the main data source just as a repeating structure. And this, this makes it simple for the webinar, but you would you could probably have this in a list and it would be better because uh, then you could maintain the holidays without having to update the form. 
Um, so here are the holidays. We've got some default values in there. So we're using default data to actually populate those holidays. You can see we've got two to begin with, um, 12-25 and, and January 1st are the default. Um, and that's what's going to happen if I open up the form from scratch. And so that's where it's referring to the holidays. So we do need to keep the holidays in a repeating structure. That can be a list, that can be in a secondary data source, or it can be in the main data source, as you see here, um, in order to uh, exclude the holidays. But that's a kind of a nice feature. Um, it's very hard to do this calculation and exclude the holidays or the weekday, weekends using just a stock calculation. Um, so that's why the date diff command is really powerful. The date diff command allows you to, of course, calculate the difference between two dates, but it also allows you to exclude the, um, the holidays and a week and dates. Any questions on those first two demos? You could also return the total amount of time as days, hours, minutes, or seconds, or milliseconds. So you can actually, um, this is useful in the next demo because we're going to be like talking about overdue status. So if there's no questions, I'm going to go on to the next demo. So the next demo is really showing how to highlight your overdue items using that calculate date diff, that date diff technique we just saw. So let's take a look at this. So this, what, this is a different form. You'll see um, in the package, we're calling this um, overdue days dashboard demo three. And if we look at the tasks, we've got a list here that has some tasks in it. And I actually have a form that I can use to fill out. There's the dashboard. Let me just add another task here. And I'm going to make this due today, or actually make it due tomorrow. And I'll assign it to myself. This is a really simple form that someone created just to do this. And before I submit it, though, I'm going to um, go back to the, so here's the dashboard before I submit it. So if I refresh this, you'll see that um, we have the same number of tasks because I haven't submitted yet. And what this form is showing is it's showing uh, these tasks from that list. If I query them, this is the first step. We query all those tasks. And now you can see that I still don't have the task in there. Um, but if I can run the date diff command on this, it's just going to calculate the number of days between when it's due and, and today. And then if I sort it, it's going to sort the ones that are overdue at the top. Now let's go back to that other form and let's submit it. So now this is going to give us a new task. And now if I go back here, um, you'll see that if I refresh this, we should get that new task. And the new task is actually due tomorrow. There it is in yellow. So it's showing up with one day overdue or one day due. And this is calculation. Once again, most of these forms that we create, we've got debug information in them. If you click on this solution version at the bottom, we can toggle between the debug screen down at the bottom here. This is a best practice as well. And you're, you're seeing in there all the commands as they're executing. And what you can see there is that we're running the date diff command for every single item in the list to calculate those, those days overdue or days due. Negative three would be overdue, right? Um, and uh, that's how we're populating this. And so that's just, once again, using that date diff command that we just saw. Here, we are using that component total days to get the total number of days. That's all we want back because that's what we're going to use for formatting. And then the form itself has a simple formatting rule on the uh, row. Let's take a look. If you have any questions on this, please uh, put them in the question area. And we're going to switch to Don next to do the next two demos. And before we do that, let me just take a quick look at this. So you can see here that here's the form, very simple. And we just have a uh, red, yellow, green formatting here. If the uh, days due is less than or equal to zero, it's red. If it's less than or equal to three, it's yellow and green is five. So non-color would be anything over five. And uh, so the, there are some tricks here. One of the tricks is that when you're running a command across a variable number of repeating items, you have to use a trigger. Uh, Don, do you want to talk at all about that, you've got a trigger 
somewhere, right? <laughs> Here it is. Yeah, it's in the uh, repeating table, so you'd have to click on the uh, table in the uh, the form. Yeah. And okay, expand the section trigger. Okay, so here um, we added a rule which uh, calculates and uses the date diff command. So um, here, if you click on the function sign, um, you'll see that it's calculating the difference between the due date and the submit date, which is wrong. It should be um, calculating the due date and today and okay. to get the component days. Okay. So we'll have to update that. Great. Uh, we can do it right now. <laughs> um, do on the fly, right? Um, <laughs> let's see. We would want to put now in here, right? Now um, today, uh, today, today, right? today, today. Today. Okay, so obviously. Uh, if you put them today, you'd have to remove some string before T. I can just do now then, right? Yeah. Okay, we're doing a demo on the fly here, so bear with us. So I'm just going to save this and, and re-upload it and see if that does the trick. Actually, it'll be the same because all the submit dates are the same, so that won't make a difference. But at least we'll have the right version in the package. Right? Right. And going to save this back here. And then um, we'll upload it. So when I think about this uh, your app that we have now that replaces InfoPath is that it's really easy to uh, upload things and try them out. So instead of this long publish process of going through you know, InfoPath Publish, you just upload the forms. And Don, where did you put that? Was it in? Um, nope. It's under the webinar one. So it's right here, the over today dashboard, right? So that's yep. version 30. So if I go and now add the one we just saved, we should get a different version here. And of course, I can just open it from here, or I can go back to templates and take a look at what the version number is. 31, that's good. Okay, so let's just open it then. Here's the old one. And obviously this is working just fine because all the things were submitted today. And uh, that's the submit form. So if I open up the new one then. It should still it should still look exactly the same, right? It's just going to be using the now instead of the submitted date. It looks a little different. That's interesting. But I guess it is doing something differently. So that means we actually did made a change. You can see the change. I don't see the, the submit dates well. are different. Oh, They're I far see. apart. I so, that this, so actually, we corrected it. <laughs> yeah, we corrected yeah, it. Yeah, we did. So the due date was 5.30 today, 6.6, six, so that is actually seven days. So so we've corrected that, and you can see how, by just changing that date, um, the, the calculations change as well. And we used to have some items that were in the green due within five days, and those have dropped out because of the calculation change. Cool. Okay, Don, I'm going to make you presenter, and you can walk through. Um, before we do that, let me just quickly jump back to our slides. So what we just showed, what I just showed was these three quick demos. Demo one and two is that one uh, sample for calculating the difference between dates with and without the holidays. And then demo three, uh, this dashboard that Don did that shows how to pull items from a list in, do the calculation on when they're due, and then show that overdue status as um, color, so that you know based on what the days do is, we change the color of the rows. That's pretty simple stuff. Don's going to next talk about converting time from different time zones. And Don, I'm just going to make you presenter. You're on.
Yep, so, um, uh, I'm actually not sure which screen is showing right now, so one second. It's, it's a date okay. platform. Okay, great. Thanks, Patrick. Um, so, okay, uh, for my demo, um, we're going to do the convert time from different time zones. And for this one, I created an XCP, which does the uh, conversion for you. So all you have to do is just, is just add it to your form. So what is an XTP or, or a template part? Well, a template part is a form template which can be saved for reuse in multiple form templates. So um, I'll just do a quick sample of how you could add it to your form. So for example, uh, you have a new form and you want to add an XTP, you just have to go to the uh, control section, add a custom control, click on add and add the template part, just browse through the uh, wizard. So here we have, um, I'm going to select the server time, uh, XTP, and there was an error. Okay, I'm not sure why this one is turning an error, but uh, let's try again. I think you have to delete the existing XTP. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so server time, remove. Thanks, Kirby. Um, you're great. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, we've got it working. And after you've added it onto your form, you just have to click on it here under the uh, control section. Look for the server time XTP, and there you go. So you'll just have to follow the uh, instructions over here and add it to your form. Now I'm going to open up a form which already has this logic added. So here for this form, I added the uh, set date and time uh, control or rules at the uh, at this button. So for the first field, we're just using the now function. It's a, a function from InfoPath, which you just have to uh, use here. So you just have to click on insert function and search for it here, or just manually type it in here. Now for the XTP, um, uh, when you add it to your form, you, you need to um, first load the scripts. So um, it should have an XML uh, added to it and you just have to uh, have uh, curious on your form and at the uh, finish loading node, run the scripts and when you uh, and when you need to get the server time, you just need to um, trigger the uh, get server time from the XTP control, set it to go, and then grab the server time from the again the XML, which is this one from the server time XTP, and uh, point it to the target date field, which is the one on the uh, main. Uh, data, connect, data connection. So um, what's going to happen here is we open, if we open up the form, I'll just refresh this. So you'll see the difference. So um, I'm from the Philippines and what's happening with the uh, now function is that when you use it, it's going to grab the uh, local time from your machine and then the server time or XTP is going to grab the time from the server where uh, the no, how does uh, the server, how does the XTP grab the time from the server? Is there a command? Um, it's loading the scripts on form okay, load. So there's, so there's some extra, was it, when you say scripts, well, let's, let's look at that because that's something that I'm not even familiar with. Okay, so you actually have some JavaScript part of, as part of the XTP. Is it part of the XTP? Yeah, it's wow. already um okay pre-added. So you just have okay. to follow the um, uh, instructions and it's already you, there. Do you have so that you, JavaScript handy? Can you show people what it's doing? Uh, uh, I have right. it here. Just, um, just to explain this to folks on the, on the call here, 
Uh, we have this new feature in Form Zero called Extend Your Form with JavaScript. We've actually had it for years, at least three years. Um, we've done demos before where we show how to sign using your finger. Uh, so that you know, and, and that requires a little custom script. In this case, this custom script, which is easy to add, it's just JavaScript. You can see it's about two pages. Um, you can just add as a resource either to an XML template part or to the form, and then um, and then the the form can access it using that load resource command. And so here you see the JavaScript that is actually um, running the command to get the time. And um, it's probably that local date time get value. Where's the server time? Anyway, um, so you can just take a look at those two files to see what's happening under the covers. Um, thanks, Don. Okay, so um, yeah, uh, it's all happening in the background. You just have to set the server time to the uh, server time in the XML. And if you click on that, it's going to update. So as you can see here, um, this is setting the time from the Philippines, and this one is uh, following Pacific Standard Time, and it should be 8:31 a.m. So that is correct, and uh, that's it. So when you submit a form. Uh, it should be um, shown there as I already have it added as in the mapping file. So let's just open up the list. I think this is a particularly important for people that have um, resources in different time zones because yeah. they need to create a unified overdue calculations based on the universal time, right, which is can be the server time, right? Right. So, and so you're, first, you're first showing how to get both times. In your second demo, you're going to show how to convert it, right? Yeah, right. So um, in, in the now function, this is what it's grab, grabbing. It's grabbing the time from a local machine, and this one is the server time, which matches the uh, created uh, column, uh, which is default in SharePoint. So um, why are we using this where if we already have the created column? Where, Well, um, there are times where we need to grab the uh, date and time from for approvals, and you can't get that from the uh, from SharePoint. So um, you can use it as a now function, but it's getting the server time instead of the uh, local machine time. Okay, um, another way to convert uh, the uh, time is by using the add seconds. Um, this is uh, just a bonus um, demo. Um, for this form, I updated the previous dashboard and used a, a used the add seconds uh, function from uh, the info path form. And as you can see here, this is set to the uh, PST time. And I'm going to convert this into EST by just clicking these, this button. So as you can see, it has changed. And what's happening there is that um, I've set the trigger. To convert it using this um, function right here, which is the add seconds and the submit date minus uh, 10,800, which is roughly around uh, three hours. But that should be converting EST to PST, right? So it's just the opposite. It's not PST to EST. It's EST to PST, right? EST, you're, uh, right, right. Okay, um, and that's it for converting time zones. Um, the next demo uh, would be extracting details from dates, from date and time fields for display in messages. Um, before we proceed with that, I'd like to show a form which has the uh, um, the useful formats which we could use 
So here um, we have the uh, format specifier. All of these were taken from this um, link from Microsoft. So um, here you can see uh, all the different specifiers here. And I've just grabbed the ones which brought out the uh, nice formats. So here I added a, a sugar a rule which converts everything here. So if you put the uh, specifier as G, uh, let's see if I, I don't have the uh, the bug button here. Um, so this is what it's going to be returned. So um, the uh, format, they, the syntax should look similar to this. So this is the format date command, and here's the date. And here you've specified what type of format you've used, which is this. This is just, this is just using the Microsoft uh, format syntax for the format string command, is that right? Yeah, that is correct. This is and this is a new command in uh, Form 4.1, which is going live hopefully tomorrow, maybe next week. But uh, very soon, we have this format date command. So if you're using Forms Viewer today, this command is still in test. As you can see from Don's URL there at the top, this command will be available within a day or two when 4.1 goes live. This is one of the new features we're adding. Um, and Don, can you show them the benefit of this, like when you would use it? Yeah, um, submit task form, okay. So um, what's nice with the uh, this command is that it's going to um, return a pretty message instead of the uh, XML uh, data from, from uh, InfoPath. And it's uh, a better way of uh, displaying the date or the due date for more, uh, more friendly, for right? messages, yeah, more friendly. Okay, so we're just going to submit here. Okay, so if we hit the submit button, so here you can see this task is due on or before Friday, June seventh, two thousand nineteen. So um, there you go. Um, that's one way of showing. So the message is actually using that um, format date command to display the Friday, June 7th, right? Right, which is um, this one, format date. I see, so you, you run the, the format date first and then you run the prompt command to get the message to prompt. show up. Yes, correct. Very cool. Awesome, well, we're running out of time, so I'm gonna switch back to my slides here and uh, thank you very much, Don, for preparing all these demos today and also for that Nice uh, explanation, and I'm just going to hopefully reshare my desktop. Okay, so you should be seeing slide four. Let me know, Don, when you can when it's back on my screen. I can see it now. Thanks. Uh, yeah, so what Don showed in the first demo was uh, a way to create server time. And the reason, once again, is that sometimes you can't get the created date, uh, modified date time. Don, do you know why that's an issue? Why can't they use those created date and you know the created column and the modified date column, what, what's wrong with those? Um, uh, there's no flexibility in it. For example, you have a node for uh, approver, uh, for approver one, where you need to know uh, when with the, it was approved, let's say approver date, uh, or approved date. No, so it won't match with the uh, date it was created, right. since uh, okay. if you're using a workflow. So you could use created, but it, it won't show you the specific time when the last person approved it, and that's the problem with it. So, yeah. so that's why we're using the server time JavaScript extension that Don showed is to store that time when the approver submits the form in, in a way that, in a format that's unified 
so all users have the same server time in their forms and we can do the calculation difference regardless of the time zones they're in. So that XDP includes all of the stuff you need. You don't need to write the JavaScript on your own. Um, let us know if you have any questions. It should be a pretty simple. You can inject curls in forms. You're, you're familiar with that already probably. Um, you don't need to use the curls injector anymore. Um, so on number five then, uh, we're just showing how to pretty print or a pretty format, how to make the, the date time more human readable. And uh, so this is all um, forms your stuff. It's uh, stock forms. We are definitely working hard to uh, remove the last barrier to using InfoPath, and that is the designer. Today, Forms Your replaces the InfoPath form services. So when you fill out a form, when you edit a form, when you create a form um, and submit it, that's all using the form services in the browser or Forms Filler if you're using the client still. So Forms Your replaces that, and it replaces a number of design features that we didn't demo today. We are working hard to get the layout canvas editing experience done in the browser so you won't have to use InfoPath Designer to do that. Um, that's going to come later this year. Hopefully, we'll have a preview in 4.2 towards the end of the summer. Um, once again, Forms here is our, our app for uh, you know creating low-cost forms for the future. It also is the only app out there that uses the existing InfoPath format, so it's backwards compatible, which means that your forms can migrate uh, to the future without any, well, minimal change, zero to minimal change. And we've also included a whole bunch of new features like some of the format date and the uh, date diff commands that you saw today. Those are all baked in to Forms here, but there's much more. We've covered them in previous webinars. I'm not going to go through all of them right now. Um, and best of all, you're going to get Kidever support. Um, I want to thank Curvy, our support lead again, and Don for this wonderful preparation for the webinar today. Do we have any questions from the audience? Uh, looks like we have one question from Pete. Thank you, Peter. Um, when will 4.1 be available for on-prem? So thanks. Yeah, so we have a lot of Forms Your On-Prem customers as well. And uh, we are going to be delivering on-prem 4.1 just as soon as we publish the on the uh, public version for 365. So probably the second or third week in June, it might be the second or third week in July. It's going to be soon. And I would guess that we would have something for you before the end of the month. In fact, um, it won't be next week, but it'll be the following week probably. So I would target around June 20th or so. Um, that's going to be what we're going to shoot for. And thanks for the comment on the um, so glad to see the date format. That is a great add to Forms Your Capability. Another comment from Peter. Thank you very much for that. Um, Patrick, it's great to have you here. Uh, same name as me. <laughs> um, question from Patrick Carroll. Will this session be recorded and available for us afterwards? Absolutely. We're recording it. We will upload it to YouTube and send out a link to the video. It will take us a few hours to do that, but by the end of today, you'll have that video link and you'll have a package with all the samples. And if you hear this message and you want free support, just contact us. We'll, we'll help you with the samples if you need help. Hope you guys all have a great day. Um, it's been a pleasure to present to you today. And um, thanks again to Curvy and Don, because more for them, it wouldn't be possible. Um, we'll be doing this webinar hopefully again next week. I think Hillary is doing a webinar either next week or the following week. And then um, we've got some new techniques. Every Whenever we discover new techniques, we're always looking to get them into a webinar so we can show you what we've learned. Hope you all have a great day. Thank you.